Hello, Edu Magicians. Welcome to the Edu Magic Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam Fesich. Dr. Sam is a professor of education, author of Edu Magic, and a pumpkin spice latte fan. This podcast is designed for pre service teachers. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin at graduation, but during that first class at 8 a.m. Let's get this party started. I'm AJ Bianco, host of Reflect Ed, a part of the Education Podcast Network. Just like the show you're listening to now, shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hey, Edumagicians, summer is a great time to get your digital portfolio checked off your to-do list. So head on over to sfessage.com to sign up for this online mini course, Digital Portfolios from Scratch to Interview Ready. Learn how to create your digital portfolio without being tech savvy and what to add into your digital portfolio, how to organize it to really make it sparkle. So go ahead, go do it now. Your future self will thank you. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Edgy Magic Podcast. Today I'm going solo and I'm going to be answering some of your burning questions about student teaching. I have three queued up here and we have a bonus at the end and I'm really excited to share about some common student teaching questions that might be rolling around in your head this summer. But before we jump into that, we need a pep talk. So some of you might be asking yourself, am I really ready to student teach? What if this is my first time teaching students in a traditional learning space, for example, in a face-to-face classroom? Maybe you've had experiences online or hybrid. How do you know if you're really ready for this big step in education, this really big step into student teaching? Let me first start by saying you are ready. You can do this. You're going to be doing the best that you can for your students day in and day out. And friends, honestly, if you weren't ready for student teaching, the faculty at your college university wouldn't let you be student teaching right now. So let's just let go of those questions. Are you really ready for student teaching? Because if you are signed up for student teaching in the fall, you have your placement, you're ready to go. You got this. Let's jump into question number one. What are some things that I can do this summer so I can be ready for student teaching in the fall? All right, so one thing that I thought of that you can be doing this summer to help you prep for student teaching in the fall is working on your student teaching letter. So I want to do a throwback to the podcast, episode three. Yeah, episode three. So go way back into the archives or just go to the show notes because the link is right there. It walks you through how to create your student teaching letter from scratch. So I mean, you can head on over to TPT, you can check out some other templates and things like that, but here I boiled it down to a few things that you need to have in your student teaching letter. First is a teacher-friendly photo. So I don't mean like glamour shots, I don't mean like professional photo, just mean a nice selfie of your of your beautiful face, maybe in front of a bookshelf, in front of a chalkboard, um, you know, it's something that shows your personality, something that's professional. So a photo of you doing what you love to do, teaching, learning, growing, all that good stuff. Share your teaching story, share about why you want to be an educator. Remember, everybody else loves to teach kids to you or loves to be around children. So try to expand upon that a little bit. Share about what makes you an educator of excellence. Maybe think about who inspired you to be a teacher and tell that story. Think about just like a paragraph, maybe two here in this teaching story and background piece. In your background, think of it as adding in stuff about where you're from, any, um, what do you want to do after graduation? Do you have a specialization area like STEM or STEAM or sign language or um, working with students with special needs? Share about your family, you know, all that good stuff. You know, just some personal information there. Think about the next part, fun facts and favorites as, you know, Fun facts all about you. So I love to share in this part 
I'm a big pumpkin spice latte fan. Yeah, I know. Big surprise, right? But you might want to include like your favorite movie, your favorite um, ice cream flavor. Are you involved in a club or organization on campus? Um, those types of things are always great things to put in there. Contact information. Here you can put a link to your digital portfolio. Maybe you've already signed up for the course to create your digital portfolio. This is a great thing to add in there so people can learn more about you. And you might also want to put in here to contact me, please get in touch with, and you can put your mentor teacher's name there, especially if this one's going to parents. And then sign it just like the professional educator that you are. So you might want to be thinking about your student teacher letter for three different audiences. The first audience being your students. You want to have student-friendly language in here. And then um, the next one could be for your cooperating teacher and your principal. So sending a little meet the student teacher letter to your cooperating teacher, to your principal, that'd be a great way for them to get to know you. Content might be the same. It might be just um, written a little bit differently, more professional there. And then also the third audience could be the parents of your students with permission from your co-op to send, maybe the co-op can send this letter to the parents of your students or post it on the on the website uh, for their classroom, whatever it might be. And the, again, the content might be the same, just um, addressed differently, stated differently. So to create your digital uh, student teacher letter, you can go in and you can create one on Canva. That's an awesome place to start. You can head on over to Adobe Spark, another great place to start. And for a template, head on over to sfesich.com and you're going to want to check out podcast episode number three. And this actually gives you a template to work from, an example, and it goes into a little bit more detail about these items that you can put into your student teacher letter. It gets you all ready to go. All right, question two, what is the school that I'll be student teaching? What's it going to be like? Or what are some things I'm going to do there? What are some things I can find? And friends, this one is very simple to do. You can do this right away. As long as you know where you're going to be placed for student teaching, do a little search, do a little preliminary search so you can be informed and prepared the first day. So first things first, um, look up that school website and bookmark that bad boy. Put that on your favorites uh, browser tab. And then do a little bit of time searching into the school's online presence. So look for uh, their social media accounts. So they have a YouTube. Start to follow them. See what things they're posting. Look for the district calendar. That's something you're going to want to have for bonus tip number or bonus question number four. How do I get myself organized? We'll get into more on that later. So look up the district calendar. Look up their vision statement, their mission statement, look up their policies. Some schools have their faculty handbook or their student handbooks posted online. Get the get that information. Look for things that are new and innovative about that school or that district. Maybe they even have a school or district newsletter that you can quickly click on and read more about that school or about that district. You can also go into faculty profiles and you can look up your cooperating teacher's name. Maybe they have their class website updated. Maybe they have information there. Look for curriculum in that then that um, grade level or subject area that you're that you will be teaching and start to do a little search on those as well because you're going to want to know the scope and sequence of that curriculum know where the students are where they're going what they've learned all that good stuff um, look up policies for the district that's always something you want to know about including technology policies snow day or um, weather days you know if there's any um, inclement weather what do they do What's the school's website um, or learning management system? Learn more about that. Are you able to go in and make a little 30-day um, trial with that learning management system so you can start to get more comfortable? You might even want to look on your cooperating teacher's links or websites if they use any technology um, weekly or daily with their students like Nearpod or Pear Deck or Flipgrid. So you can go in and start to learn about those as well. All right, question number three, how do I get to know my co-op? I'm a little nervous. Are they going to like me? Okay, friends, first of all, let's start with communication. We want communication is key, and I have a few conversation starters to help get that going. You're going to want to... Um, Write an email to your co-op, introducing yourself to them, letting them know who you are, what university you're from, how long your placement's going to be, when your placement starts, when it ends, all that good stuff. But once you have that initial email out there and you've you know connected with your co-op, um, it's now time to start having some conversation with him or her or them. 
So tell them about yourself. Ask them about their teaching story. What's their teaching journey? How long have they been teaching in that school or that district or that grade level? What gets them excited about coming back to school each and every fall? Why are they excited? What are what are they excited about when it comes to the field of teaching? Friends, we know that the field of teaching is always growing, so there's so much to be excited about. Maybe they're excited about a new STEM program or excited about maker spaces, whatever that might be. Then also share about what you're excited about when it comes to teaching. Share about expectations. What are the expectations that you have? What are some ex- expectations that they have for you? And this could get into like nitty gritty, like, um, you know, you need to have your lesson plans digitally sent to me every Friday before the following week that you're teaching. So think about those expectations and share your expectations for yourself as a student teacher and maybe some expectations you have for them in a professional way um, as your cooperating teacher. So this could be like providing quality feedback. If you are working on a lesson plan and maybe this is the first time you're grouping students, you want to ask for feedback. How did the grouping of students go? How did my pacing go? How did Uh, the timing go of delivering this lesson. Uh, What about assessment techniques? You know, be specific in that feedback. And another great question you might want to ask your co-op are, what are some, something along the lines of, what are some ways that I can use the first few days of student teaching, start building relationships with students, or get in front of students and work with them? Friends, you know, working in the classroom and looking at the procedures and observing and all that stuff is fantastic. And yes, you want to do that. But you also want to get to know your students as well. So ask your cooperating teacher, what are some ways that I can start to build relationships with students from day one? And then we might want to go back to that first question of, you know, maybe creating that student teacher, uh, meet the student teacher letter. That could be really helpful. All right, bonus question, what should I have in my student teacher binder? And friends, I get this question every year right around this time. So I'm going to share with you a few things to get you started. And you can head on over to sfsh.com slash 15 for some more tips to get you started on building your student teacher binder. And if you want your student teacher binder already created and done for you, I have that solution as well. Uh, Hannah Sansom and I worked and we created a student teacher binder. Uh, digital student teacher binder that you can download. It's it's super student teacher budget friendly. It's only 10 bucks. And if that is something you're interested in, head on over to Insta or Twitter and DM me the word binder and I'll send you the link so you can grab it right away. All right, so let's talk about what goes into the student teacher binder. So you're going to want to have contact information so you can contact your co-op and your college supervisor, your school schedule, and that includes the school with your student teaching and your college university schedule, calendar, monthly view, weekly view, daily view, so you can really schedule out those details, and weekly to look at that week, you know, at a glance, and the calendar to mark any important days um, that you might have off or any um, assemblies or any events going on. You're going to want to have a spot for all your lesson plans. You can separate those lesson plans in the subject area into periods. Um, However your day is organized, you can see them, you know, ready to go, and you're going to have a professional development log as well. You're going to want to have other content in there as well. And you can head on over to sfestage.com slash 15 for more information about getting yourself organized. And if you want this digital student teacher binder done for you, DM me over on Insta or Twitter, the word binder, and I'll be happy to send that out. And you can also head on over to show notes to get a little freebie to help you get started in planning your month. All right, friends, let's recap these three questions and our bonus. What can I do this summer to prep for student teaching? And that was creating your student teacher letter. If you head on over to the third episode of the podcast, it'll walk you through, have a little template and an example of creating your student teacher letter. What will my school be like? And that was all about researching that school and that district. How can I get to know my co-op? We had a few conversation starters. And what do I even include in my student teacher binder? You can head on over to sfestures.com slash 15 for more information and a whole podcast episode about that. All right, friends, have a great day. And remember, you have the edgy magic within you. Bye for now. And there you have it, edgy magicians. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with your friends. For more edu magic, check out sfesage.com 
and follow Dr. Sam on Twitter and Instagram at SVesage. Until next time, you have the edge of magic within you. Thank you.